Widgets on your iPhone or your iPad are so convenient. I love using these to not only customize the look of my home screens, but add functionality. Weather, reminders, calendars, battery levels, music, but no home app widgets. That is where the home widget for HomeKit app comes in. Today we're gonna to discuss using the home widget app to add HomeKit accessories to your home screens as widgets. Yes, let's go. Yo, what's going on? My name is Shane. If you're new here and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. It's hard to believe that we've only had home screen widgets available on the iPhone or iPad since iOS 14. It was first announced at WWDC 2020 and rolled out to the public later that year. But to this day, we still don't have native widgets for the Home app or for our HomeKit accessories. And that is where the Home widget for HomeKit app comes in. Big thanks to the developer of the Home widget app for sponsoring today's video and supporting the channel. I've said it before, but I'm just a huge fan of these, you know, independent developers for building these awesome apps that really expand the functionality of HomeKit beyond what is possible natively. The Home Widget app is available on the iPhone and iPad. I'll put a link below in the description if you want to download it. I've actually been using and even testing the beta version of this app for quite a while, and the developer has continued to listen to you know feedback, and I've seen him make massive improvements with each version, which is always a huge plus. Currently, you can add any of your HomeKit accessories to your widgets and even control things like color and brightness of your lights. You can add cameras that conveniently pop up, and yes, you can speak through them right there in the widget pop-up. You can add sensors, battery levels, and even more stuff like shortcuts and opening the Home app. You can have accessories toggle immediately when you tap you know, on the widget, or you can require a confirmation. I'll show you a quick walkthrough of setting up a widget in just a second, but first, let me show you some of the ways that I like using this app. First, you know, is the obvious widgets on your iPhone. If I can have access to whichever accessories I need or sensors at a quick glance. I really love having my cameras available, um, you know, in my widgets. Being able to tap any camera that I want to quickly have pop up is really nice. Tap it to go full screen and even two-way talk through the widget and then just swipe it away once you're done. I think you can get real creative with these widgets, especially if you're using focus modes. So you can create, you know, specific home widgets that display maybe when you're in your work focus mode, for example, and then another one when you're in your chill time focus mode and kind of customize those home screens, uh, which is really cool. You could even use this app on an iPad to create sort of a simple smart home dashboard if you wanted, you know, which I think is really awesome. So what I did here was create a focus mode specifically for this iPad called iPad Home Display. You can call it whatever you want, obviously. And I put the iPad in this focus mode whenever it's on the mount. And for that focus mode, I turn off all notifications and things like that and use a custom home screen with widgets like weather, family calendar, grocery list, and of course, my home widgets. Then if you ever wanna use the iPad for anything else, since it's using a focus mode, you can just grab it, turn off that focus mode and you're good to go. Pretty sweet. I love being able to combine other widgets like the calendar reminders with my home accessories on something like an iPad. I'll put links to that iPad stand and everything else that we talk about down below uh, in the description in case you want to check any of that out. Now, first of all, let's talk about sensors and the state of your accessories in the widgets because there are some nuances to note. And I'll say the developer does make all this very clear, which I do appreciate. Uh, but currently the sensor data cannot be updated in the background. And this is just a technical limitation of widgets on iOS and HomeKit. So for that reason, they recommend not using any critical sensors like smoke or leak sensors, you know, in your widgets. Sensors are displayed as little circles and since background refresh is not possible with sensors these will sort of gray out and be considered out of date after a while when this happens you'll see a little refresh bubble that you can tap which will manually trigger 
all of your widgets to refresh when you know when you tap any of those additionally anytime you interact with the widget you know turning on or off a light something like that all the sensors and accessories will also update the default time for sensors to be considered out of date is 30 minutes which they will then be grayed out and display that little refresh bubble that timeout setting can be changed in the settings now every time the app is in the foreground all the devices and sensors will be updated like I said so this happens anytime you trigger a device through the widget or you can do a manual refresh like we just talked about so let's go ahead and jump in check out the settings and create some widgets first the settings the very first option is the widget refresh frequency that allows you to define how often the app tries to update the status of the accessories in your widgets and as you can see five minutes is the lowest option this can be set between five minutes and 24 hours and I want to point out if you want a detailed explanation of what each one of these settings does tap the question mark and tap about settings the developer has written some really good descriptions for pretty much every setting to help you understand you know what each does and what's going on within the app we can save panels on iCloud, which allows you to share them, which is really nice. Like we discussed earlier, there are some settings that you can play around with for your sensors and the status of those. You can even change the font size, the font type, and alignment to change up the look and design of your widgets if you want. I kind of like keeping the default font and size personally. Now let's go ahead and create a widget. Here you can see the existing widgets that I've made. To create a new one, just tap the plus icon. We can choose the size and style. Personally, I like the tiles a little bit bigger, especially on the iPad. Tap edit panel. And here we can start adding our accessories and change the background style. You can change the color, transparency, and the blur of the background. On the iPad, I actually like using 100% transparency and it makes you know the tiles look like they're actually on the background. You do have to do another step to accomplish that, which I'll show you here in just a minute. But first, let's add a tile. You can add accessories, sensors, scenes, and there's the Others tab, which gives you even more options, including opening the Home app, run a shortcut, an accessory counter, which is a cool one, and you can add a refresh widget tile, which is nice to manually refresh those widgets. But let's go back. I'll add a couple of accessories so you can kind of see the process here. If I tap chandelier, you can even choose what action type you want. This is a dimmer, so I have the option for a simple toggle on off, a toggle with dimmer, including brightness and color, or just the dimmer. It's great to have these options because maybe I just want the widget, you know, to turn it on and off and not worry about the brightness and all that. I can change the name here and I even have lots of icons that I can choose from. Yes, way more icons than those that are available in the home app. I'll add another accessory and here I'll choose a sensor just so you can kind of see. Let's choose left gate. I can change the name and icon here of course. And there we go. You can also put any of your scenes here in the widget. I'll go ahead and add my movie time scene. Now let's check out the other options. I like the accessory counter, like I said, you can use this to see how many lights are on in your house, how many contact sensors are open, how many doors are unlocked. I'll add one for my locks. Now I'll see a little counter showing me how many you know, of my locks are currently unlocked. One of my favorite use cases of this app is using it for cameras. I can choose any of my HomeKit cameras. Let's go with the front porch. You even have some options here for stream with or without audio. You can enable the mic automatically so you can actually have a two-way conversation through this widget which is just pretty awesome. You can choose snapshots instead of a live streaming feed if you want. Having the camera pop up and the mic automatically enabled is perfect for things like door bells or front cameras maybe you where you want to quickly interact with somebody I'm actually quite surprised at how fast the cameras load and start streaming and like I said you can have the the option for the mic to automatically be turned on which reduces the amount of steps it takes to start communicating with somebody at the front door so really nice features and options that are built in another thing I really like is adding the battery status for my wireless cameras you can add the battery status for any of your sensors or accessories too but I like this for my cameras because this is something that I always forget to check I can add the battery status to my home
home screens and just kind of always keep an eye on them. And now I'll know when those battery levels are starting to get low so I can pull the camera down and give them a charge. You can also add empty slots and add text to them if you want. This just gives you some flexibility, you know, in the design and organization of your widgets. And lastly, let's cover the background in case you want yours to look, you know, something like mine here with that transparent background. If you look closer, you can see that this is actually separate widgets here on this home screen. So to accomplish this look, you have to load a screenshot of your background to the app. Tap on backgrounds and here you can upload images. There's a little video tutorial embedded here showing you exactly how to do this, which is nice. Basically just put your device in that little wiggle mode, swipe to get a clean background and take a screenshot, do one for a horizontal and vertical, both light and dark modes if you plan to use both of those, and then upload those right here in the app. Finally, you place your widget on your home screen and then you need to specify the position of the widget by tapping edit widget and choose the portrait and landscape position of the widget. And that's it, you're all done. So I feel like the developer here of this app has really done a great job and of you know thinking of really everything and really working around the limitations put in place by Apple for this sort of thing. Hopefully we'll see some more improvements with iOS 16 and I'm sure the developer is gonna continue listening to our feedback and updating the app. You can download a free trial to test out, unlock all the features with either a monthly subscription of 49 cents a month, an annual subscription of $3.99 a year, or a lifetime license for a one-time payment of $8.99. I'm not crazy about subscriptions, so I'm really glad the developer offers a one-time payment, and it's under nine bucks. I mean, that's probably less than you spent on a latte and croissant this morning. I'm just saying. The app is family sharing enabled, so you can pay once and get it on all of your family's devices. And you know, you're supporting an independent app developer making cool stuff for HomeKit, so it's a win-win. As you can see, you can get really creative with this app and it's really nice to actually have home screen widgets for your HomeKit accessories on your devices. Let me know what you think. Have you tried this app? Do you plan to? And what are your thoughts? I put a link below in the description if you wanna check it out. And uh, if you wanna check out some other HomeKit apps that I like and recommend, check out this video right over here. And if you're new to all this HomeKit smart home stuff, check out my Getting Started 101 playlist right here. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on new HomeKit videos every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.